All right, so I'm back. I'm going to go deeper into the third ethic. This is one of those things that, like, again, I'm doing this so that as you take your journey through permaculture, you're not derailed by what I call permaculture's third rail, which is the third ethic misapplied. So again, just to restate from the last view, return of surplus and limiting consumption and population, right? This is the third ethic. This is the third ethic as it was written by Bill Mollison uh, before it was rewritten by people that have certain political agendas. I don't care what your political agenda is. I'm not going to try to debate you know, politics inside permaculture. My view is if you have a political agenda and you want to take permaculture with you into the political arena, uh, arena, go nuts. Go nuts with it. If you want to bring your political agenda into permaculture, this is an anarch anarchist system. It's set up and designed to be an ar anarchist system, so leave it alone. Just you focus on your solution and the people that want to follow you to it, and we'll focus on our own. This is how I understand the, the third ethic, and this is why I think it makes more sense. Rem uh, more sense. Remember, the goal here is to create self-replicating, self-sustaining systems. So we want not one guy to have a really great thing. We, if we want permaculture to become what it can become, then i got to put it to you this way. We want people that go look at what Sepp Holzer did in Austria and go, meh. We don't want them going, wow. As long as they're going, wow, it's like some unbelievable thing that only special people can do. Right? We don't want people looking at what, what Jeff Lawton did in Jordan with greening the desert and going, that's unbelievable. It is unbelievable for right now. It wakes a lot of people up. I'm not putting down either one of these gentlemen and the wonderful work they've done. What I'm saying is we need to get to a state in society where people go, well, of course, that's what happens. That's just the way it works. And we're not going to get there if people keep clouding this with, with political crap. And we're not going to get there unless people understand the mechanics and how the ethics actually lead to the end. And this is what people struggle with. They think the ethics are just there to keep us in line. The ethics actually guide us to self-sustaining solutions. I can't harm the earth and, and harm people and create a sustaining system. The people will eventually rebel, and the resources that the earth has will run out, get tired, and not work anymore. And we have fields where all the topsoil is gone, and all of his is chemical fertilizer, and we're having more and more problems in agriculture. That's a perfect example. By ignoring the ethics, we break the system. It's not about keeping us in line from a standpoint of, you know, like, like you know, somebody making a list. You get a demerit, you get a star. It's about creating a system that actually works. So when I want to make the system work, let's look at it from a standpoint of, and on 20 acres, trust me, we'd be doing a lot more than this. This is one little segment, one little production cycle on 20 acres to help us understand the concept of returning surplus, limiting consumption, and population. Let's say I want to put 100, 100 chickens on my 20 acres. No challenge at all. I could do a lot more than 100. But that's how many I want to produce in this given production cycle. So I've got, I've got my hens that lay eggs and, and, and I'm gonna, some of the eggs I'm going to harvest, but some over one production cycle I'm going to let 100 chicks raise up to broiler size and I'm either going to eat them or sell them. As part of the production cycle, and it may not be concurrent, right? Because I need this stuff to, to be part of the feed. I might be buying some feed from another permaculture operation, but I might want to use some of this feed here. And let's say I'm going to plant amaranth, quinoa, millet, and sunflower. That's some real high-powered stuff to be feeding my free-range chickens that are out there on paddocks eating all kinds of other stuff. So out of that amaranth, quinoa, millet, and sunflower, I may only give my... I, mean, I don't need a ton of food for 100 chickens. Understand the population limit. Uh, Tyson Farms that go in on this 20 acres, and what are they going to put in? 10,000 chickens a cycle, and a cycle's like 34 days? with these, these, these uh, hybrid chickens and these chicken houses of horrors, uh, that's too many. We know that we could probably put 1,000 chickens on 20. If I want to dedicate the land mostly to chickens, can I produce 1,000 chickens on 20 acres? It, it's not really that much of a problem, but can I do 10,000? Tyson can with chicken houses. And the chicken never sees the light of day, and they bring all the food in from somewhere else. But even they can't do 100. But what I want to know is, with the third ethic, what can I put here without hurting the earth or people? So the people that want to use the word fair share, most of those with the political agenda say, well, the fair share is whatever you have left over, your yields, your grain, your biomass, your money, your food, you should give away what you don't need. No, no, no. I should return the surplus 
to my operation, and if I want to give some away, I should do it to the end of helping the earth and helping people by creating more systems like the one I already have. So I get to make that decision as an anarchist who I think is most deserving of my charity. Charity is private, social redistribution is public. This is a private system for private individuals to make their own decisions in. All right? But let's look at the mechanics and why return versus redistribution, which I have a real problem with that word just being thrown in there because somebody thought it was a good idea, because it ruins the whole thing. The last thing I want to do if I want this system to stay functional is a whole lot of redistribution. I want a whole bunch of return. So my 100 chickens go out. But you can bet there's a breeding stock of chickens, maybe 20, 20 chickens that I allow some to be egg producers and some to be uh, brooding hens to bring my 100 chickens out. Maybe it's 10. I don't really need a lot of chickens to produce 100. I really don't. But I have that, that remaining number of chickens. Now these chickens produce surplus while they're growing up, right? They produce it in the form of manure. Right? So I've got chicken manure coming out of these 100 chickens, and I've got chicken manure coming out of the 20 chickens in my flock, my breeding flock. And occasionally I may take a new chicken into the flock, but it, let's just make this simple. Now, what do I do with that manure? Do I distribute it, or do I return it? I return it in the form of compost, or I let the chickens free reign, and I put it there, and I return it to improve the quality of the soil. Right? I get a yield of grain. Some of the grain gets returned to the chickens, which produces the manure, which gets returned as surplus back to the system. You see how it works? Uh, biomass. This is everybody that wants to redistribute people's stuff, wants to focus on these last two, food and money, right? I get all this grain, and what the chickens don't eat, I can sell it, or I can eat it, or I can give it away. It's up to me how I want to do that, right? But what about the biomass? What's the biomass? When I cut down the amaranth plant that's this big, right? And I've got, I've got other videos you can look at. I've got a seven and a half foot tall amaranth plant. Some of that, if I have cattle, I might be able to feed that to my cattle or goats or sheep. But if I don't have cattle, goats, or sheep, then I have all that biomass. So what do I do with it? Well, I compost the biomass and I return it as a surplus back to the system. If I have a cow, right? Let's look a little cow. A little dairy cow operation. I do uh, a one-in-one -one operation, which means I have a dairy cow, I have her inseminated, and I raise up one calf a year as a meat yield, right? But those cows then are going to get some of the biomass. Not all of the biomass is going to be something they want. But what they want, they're going to get. They're also, like the chickens, going to produce manure. That gets returned as surplus back into the system, all right? See, if I say return of surplus, this is what I get. If I say redistribute surplus, all of this stuff goes somewhere else. Now, does that mean nothing ever goes anywhere else? Well, no. What about my 100 chickens? Maybe I have a family that wants 20 chickens that they're raising for a meat yield, and they can sell 80 off. So 80 of those chickens create a monetary yield. Now, maybe this family decides that of that monetary yield, I'm going to bring it right over here, maybe some piece of this does go to charity. It's up to them. And what portion goes is up to them. Maybe most of this monetary yield goes right back here into the system to improve it. Maybe it goes to pay for a house. So that family can look after themselves and their children so that they have a house now. Or maybe it goes to expand their house. Or maybe they already have a house, but since they have 20 acres, instead of sending the kids away, they build one house here, and I'm not a good drawer, folks, and one house here, and each kid gets a house. And we start a multi-generational operation. Maybe we use it to buy ourselves another 10 acres. I mean, maybe we're doing this right in the heart of farm country where they're screwing everything up by plowing fields in straight lines and planting GMOs, and maybe this is the solution that we're after. And maybe what this family then does is provides information and knowledge, and yes, maybe some charity at their discretion, but their goal is not to provide a system that just makes some, this guy over here, right? He shouldn't be living off of this. No. You know what he should be doing? He should be creating his own system. 
his own way. And their return of surplus should be to the end of helping him get here, not keeping him where he is doing nothing. All right? And if you, if you want to, again, debate the politics of this, go nuts. If you think wealth should be redistributed, I got great news for you. It's being redistributed all the time. Every civilized country in the world has social programs to do redistribution of wealth. You may think they're too big, too small, whatever. That's fine. Go to the political arena with that. This is a solutions-based ethic. And if I'm doing this type of, of, uh, of reinvestment, see, there's certain words that we can put here. This is investment. That's what this means. This is an in investment. Now, does that mean that I have no room for charity? No, because my charity is also a very charitable person. But when I, when I invest in somebody, that's what I, I see myself as doing. I want them to have more opportunity to become a better person. I want them to step up and be able to do something. I don't believe charity is so a person can continue to live in a way that just is how they are right now. I, I, I want, but that's what I want. Maybe it's not what you want. You don't. You can set this up, and you can figure out how to live on almost nothing if you want to, and you can take one hundred percent of your of your actual surplus, and you can give it away if you want to. It's up to you. But you can't actually give away hundred percent of your surplus of everything and keep the system running. We have to create these interconnecting life webs. If we give away, well, I got manure and surplus, so I'll give it to somebody else. So they'll have fertility. We, you need fertility here, right? Well, I have this surplus grain. You need to feed your chickens and your people. You need a monetary yield. You ha we, this is a society where we need money. You have to pay the bills. You have to take care of this house when something breaks. You have to fix it. It's yours. This is the third ethic. This is how it works. Now, people say, but I want to, to, to fix the inequity in the world. Great, this will do that. If you want to do it through political means, again, go do it politically. But if you want to actually get it done, go teach people how to do this. Go show people how to control, how to, first of all, how to create a surplus. So there's one to be dealt with in the first place. And then what to do with it, how to create empowerment, and how to replicate that system. You want to solve all the world's problems, this will do it, especially if we leave politics out of it.